duct tape's place, the new improved at that. Check it out. We in a uh, totally different little location here. That's trash. I just have to get it cleaned up. My uh, Suburban's full of trash out of here. This is my other garage. There's the other one right through the window. So it's still the same place, same location, just different garage. Um, well, I got, let's check this out. We'll go on here. So I need 138 more subscribers is what, I'm, what, is what my goal is. And I need a few, uh, over 482 watch hours left. That's just so I can make a little bit of cash just to help fund my projects. So if you guys aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Um, I get a lot of new view viewers is what I is what I get, and more than re a lot of return viewers that are subscribed. So if you ain't subscribed, you guys clicked on here. Appreciate it. Uh, stick around. We got the uh, we call it snow blower. Uh, got a pretty good deal on that. Pretty much free. I'll tell you why it was free. We, uh, I got a free weed eater a while back, now a couple years ago. I did some work on it, and it was, um, I put a new carburetor on it, new air filter, new fuel lines, fuel filter, the in tank fuel filter. It was a steel FS. 55R, I made a little video about it. Hey, can we trade this? Will it run? Can we trade it for a snowblower? Well, obviously, we was able to get it to start back up. You know, it just set for two years is all it did. So we traded it for this. So I had the money and parts for the carburetor and all that, which was, what, what, 30-some 30, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, I don't know, something like that. So I'm out 40 bucks. So we took, went and picked that up for 40 bucks, basically, since we traded well, on my way home, on the same street that I live on, almost got home, I ran into this little weed eater right here. And it was on the side of the road, in the scrap pile for free. Pressure washer's been mine, that's my, mine, I paid for that. So, if we can get that running with no parts required, well, we will have to get a head on it. it does need a head, so. We will have to get one of them. So, for you buy a new head for this, I weed eat my grass with it. Then it's it paid for itself. The head did, and uh, we'll eventually basically say we got this for free. Uh, so let's go around and talk about this thing here. It's a uh, 27 inch. We call it. It's quite a few years older but if you look at the tines the paint ain't really scraped off of it nothing like that this thing's like new and you're like brand new almost um so the guy had this up for trade for a steel weed eater he said there was something wrong with the transaxle it's hard to push so when i get there the guy says uh hey uh, the thing seems to be moving okay now uh, so it's moving like it should. The guy also says, "Hey, I think uh, you know, I think the transaxle fluid leaked out of it. It's probably why it was locked up like that." I says, "Okay." Well, we get to looking down here. You can see all the fluid like that's run down all the way down this thing. So I checked the oil a little earlier today, and it's, there ain't nothing in it. There is, there's enough to touch the dipstick. Um, I think it's supposed to be way up here. I don't know, somewhere up there. I think it's supposed to be way up here. So it's out of oil. So I'm thinking the oil leaked out of this thing, and it's just plastic. And it's wet, so I'm thinking the oil may have leaked out of that and leaked down and got all over this thing. So I'm thinking the possibility that there's really nothing wrong with this thing. Just so that it leaked oil. And we can uh we're gonna we're gonna 
see if we can get it running today. Um, the gas tank is clean. It got it was emptied. Um, hang on. Guess what I got? I got a flashlight finally. Look at that. And things real clean. I mean, there's some like dirt powder particles. There's no rust. Sounds clean. Sounds good. Um, the start system on this is a little different than your normal uh, small engine. It's actually a 120 volt starting uh, starter. Um, you got this. I think that that's your little start button. Eep, eep. And uh, let's see what this says. Ugh. 291 cc engine maximum. So what we want to do is try to just try to get this thing started and then we're going to check out the pulley system on this thing and hopefully it will it will bolt up to the yeah the shaft's pretty big so it's i think that's a one inch shaft so the club car we're doing i'm hoping that this will fit in the club car this is only like a nine and a half horsepower engine i want a 15 13 or 15 but i'll, I'll go with this the motor it's on it's a nine horsepower um it smokes a little bit there, it, and it's got kind of a little weird noise to it kind of almost like a rod going <laughs> so hopefully we can get this going and we should be able to use the starter generator that's on the cart on that pole with the pulley system and all that to start this motor that's how we're how i'm looking at it if not we can hopefully buy another starter that will work and not have to have this 120 because there's no way we'd be able to start it um yeah so i guess uh what i want to do is I'm going to flip this up before I put any oil in it so we don't spill no oil and there ain't no gas in it. We don't have to worry about losing, spilling gas either. I want to lift this thing up. And I want to check and see what we can see with this transaxle. So let me flip this upside down and we will get to looking at it and see what's up with it. So let's go up in here. Bring you guys down so you guys can get a peep or two. All right. Well, she looks pretty, pretty. Uh, there's nothing. That chain's a little loose. I don't think there's a good way to adjust the chain. There ain't nothing wrong with that transaxle. It's all geared, it's all uh, chain driven, so. this and it turns this this belt this belt there's two two belts one here one here then you got this wheel and then this wheel rides on this and as it goes faster it moves out it, see how that you shift your gears and that thing will move out um, so yeah you got your levers up here for all this and this will move your wheel down here 
that lever moves the wheel. This lever will engage the that stuff, and this will engage your. Uh, this one, I believe, is one that will engage your drive. So, yeah, it runs down there behind there. So I'm gonna say there ain't nothing wrong with the transaxle. It can't leak no fluid. There's there's no fluid in it. So we know it's engine oil. So we need to address the engine oil issue. So this guy, uh, he's like, I don't want to pay that pay to have that transaxle worked on. I don't know what's up with the transaxle. Why? Whatever. I have no clue. It's, Transaxle could be the motor, he could have lied to me, so you know, we don't know. But since we know the transaxle is just the chain's a little loose, sloppy, but I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? There's no adjustment. I could take a link out, but who just say that that uh, if, uh, if I take a whole link out, it's gonna be too tight. So we're just gonna see what we can do with it right now. The tires need some air in them. isn't the greatest so we're gonna flip her back down I'll get her put down I'm gonna add some oil to her and then we're gonna kind of rotate her over and stuff all right so I had to get a little get my speed wrench there put on there and get this cap to come off because it was so tight well then I checked this drain plug and it was loose so most likely that's why the oil leaked out of it <laughs> this is what I prefer Rotilla T4 or T5 whatever this it's heavy duty diesel engine oil uh, it's probably not great for winter but uh, I like to use it just because of the protection you know flat tappets and this and that neighbor came over so I stopped filming for a second I got her filled up with some oil you hear that clunk clunk sounds like a rod yeah I think the oil drained out of it and uh, she knocked knocks So, but anyways, let's do a compression test on it. And then that could be maybe the belt down there making noise. I don't know. We, hopefully, hopefully that's what it is. Got that rubber piece stuck in there for to help pull them out. spark plug in her she ran for a little bit but she's pretty much brand new BPR 7 ES well let's see what kind of noise she makes where uh, 
put that up without the plug in there. See, she's making noise still. Maybe it's something in the flywheel could be. from is this the wrong no okay this is a Matco one I'll get you guys up here so you guys can see here but I would assume that this has got a compression release on it. Yeah, 50 PSI, probably got a, probably got compression release on her. She right at, yeah, she right at 50. So, I know I'm, that noise kind of went away too. I think it's in that plastic housing there. It's probably rat nest or something like that in there. So we're gonna get the, put the spark plug back in her. So I tighten that up and she clicked at 17, 16, 16 uh, foot pounds and I pulled on her pretty tight to see and she she I'd say she probably torqued them down about 18 I mean according to the torque wrench I carry in my back pocket so uh oh we need to check for spark that would make a lot of sense I mean uh let's see if I can't find a spark tool here something used for spark there you go. I just got a screwdriver here. I'm gonna kinda put her on over to here. I guess I should have did that when I had a spark plug out. So that's fuel on and off. That's choke. That's a key. So that turns the pilot on. Stop run okay so we should have some spark I think right now and I ain't seen none uh, looks like getting shocked today yeah we got spark I don't know if you guys seen it or not, but yeah, she was blue. She was blue. She was a hot blue one. All right. So I think uh, throw some gas in her and see what she does. What do you guys think? I think that'd be it. So we got compression. We got spark. The only thing we're missing is fuel. And, uh, I got a little 40 to 1 mix. So we're going to use a little mix gas in this just to, just because it's all I got. It'll help lubricate the cylinders too, but that ain't why I do it. I did it because it's all I got. Alright, let's see. Let's 
see, let's see. So it's got starting engine directions here. You turn it to start, which is all the way here. It's on run. Make sure the key's in. Three times on the old primer button. I'm gonna do five. It says three max, but. Well, time to be lazy. We're gonna hook this thing up. Alright, well, let's move you guys on up over here. this thing and it should be picking up fuel from something see there's a little hole in there you got to make sure you cover though I do know that much Fuel was going, and it's coming out of the overflow of the ch of the carb. It's pumping too much. something I just thought, thought about it bring you guys down here with me Let's 
see that? Might help if the gas was on. So let's uh, let's see what we get from that before we touch that carburetor. I don't want don't want to touch no carburetor. choke on try to suck that clean help maybe clean the main jet out but it has a mist to it oh i am um, i unplugged the thing sure how to go forward reverse how do we you guys know how to use this thing that make it go in reverse That's for the snow blower. Ah, push it down. There we go. Reverse. Push, push the knob down. ready for sale I ought to sell it sell it by me a uh, better uh, um, uh, motor. come on well she does run let's see if she goes in first now
run. She works. Everything works like it should. Um, this does the uh, whole uh, that thing. It works like it should. So we got to adjust these valves or check them anyways. I'm going to have to find out what the specs for our form and see if that helps any. But also you got to remember I did put freaking two cycle oil in it so it, that may be a may be a reason of why it uh, uh, might be a reason why it's missing too. seem to be awful loose let me uh let me check see if i can't find some specs on this motor and to get some uh maintenance specs on the bows and uh get my filler gauge and we'll see what's up let's see what's what, what's going on uh hopefully uh just a valve adjustment will take out that missing so uh, i'm gonna go and uh find my stuff so I found a little thing. I, it took me a little bit to find it because these are a, a storm. Let's see. L, an LCT engine. It's like a storm force. Let me see. Get back to where I was at now. And this is a 291 torque, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And it's got all your specs. Get back to where we were at, and then make sure we're at the 291. So valve adjustment is uh, five thousandths to seven thousandths. Exhaust is seven thousandths to nine thousandths. So we're gonna. She's still a little warm still. We're gonna check the, uh, we're gonna check them. And so we know that one should be pretty loose. This one's tight, so it's pressing down. And then this one's at the top of the stroke. When one valve's pushing down, you know the other one's closed. We got a 10 thousandths here. Ten thousands almost fits. Four thousands. There's a five thousands. Right here. Huh. That thing's about right. Let's go. What would it say five to seven? It's a little tight. A little tight on the intake because it should be five to seven thousands. This is five, and she don't want to go in there really. Let's check the exhaust. Well, well, let me adjust this one. We'll get this in about six thousandths. So we want to loosen this nut here. Oh, Lord. She's a tidy. We definitely don't want to break nothing either. What is going on here? Ooh. 
it's not popping free from that. I had to find a different wrench too then. Took everything I had to break that free. I had to give me a wrench to hold on to that and pop the free a 10 and a 13. So we still have the 5,000s here. Uh, there we go. Let's uh, I want to try to get her set at six. Let's see if I can find a six here. There's a four. Another four. There's a seven. There's the eight. The six. Having to use a four and a two, then that right there will give me 50. Let's just do this one right here. Get rid of the tap in a bend. Man, that's kind of hard to do right there like that. So we're going to go ahead and have to I guess we'll just have to go ahead and use the 5 and 04. There it is. There's the 06 right there. 6,000. here yeah she's tight too tight still way too tight adjusting valves <clears throat> feels pretty good there let's check the seven she may be a little big now there's a seven something else behind it yeah the seventh I need to tie her up just a little tad bit here. Seven's tight. Let's see what I do with the six now.
Yeah, right there. All right. You know what? My wrench was there, so I wonder if my wrench might have been helped throwing it off. Nope, just got a good drag. I ain't gonna make you guys watch through the exhaust side. It's just same as the, the intake side. Just uh, we'll watch when this one starts to move. Then we know this one's open. Right there. See how that one's closing? Damn. That's because I uh, had to loosen, fight to loosen this one up too. So. Uh, seven to nine on the exhaust so let's find the eight now I'm gonna do I'm gonna set her at eight so so you guys ain't gotta watch me fight through this fuel off and as it was running out of fuel I turned the choke on and then it would suck the rest of the fuel out of the bowl it's a good way to basically winterize your stuff so you don't have gas sitting in your carburetors uh, adjusted them valves they still kind of missing and cutting out it started to get a little better at the end there um, but like I said if it's going to go on this golf cart I'm not worried about it we'll put a we're going to end up putting a different carburetor on it anyways now there's a thing about these um, winter only motors, summer motors with these this company, and I don't know what it is. Extreme Sub Zero Engineering. I'm not sure what all that means. I'm gonna do a little research, and uh, we're gonna see if that's why I can't run it during the summer. I mean, maybe it's something to do with cooling. If it is, then maybe I'll uh, we'll. Uh, figure out what to do maybe it's got something to do with the way it heats the motor up to help with the oil viscosity or whatever i don't know uh i'm gonna search around for a 12 volt starter if if that's on a tanium then we're gonna have to figure out some other things well, hopefully we can um use the starter off of the because we're gonna have the pulley on here hopefully the pulley fits if it fits then we can use well, the clutch, I should say, and it's got the starter pulley as part of the clutch, so I'll be able to use the starter and the and, and that pulley, hopefully, if the shafts are the right. Uh, other than that, this thing needs some air. I may post this, go ahead and post this online for sale, and uh, we'll see if anybody bites, because it's going to be a while before I can actually do the motor uh, swap in it so we're just going to go ahead and let this uh sit i'll keep an eye on the oil leak here and uh i'm going to do research on what it means about the sub-zero winter engine type deal versus uh their summer engine and see see if i can maybe if i have to buy some parts to uh maybe it's like a bigger flywheel maybe it's better you know cooling fins bigger cooling fins or something then I'll maybe swap that over, but I may end up just selling this and uh, trying to trying to get a 15 horse. So on that note, we're done for the day on this. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around watching. Um, we've got the new shop up. And we're gonna we're gonna do a few things in here. This is gonna be more of the clean area. That over there is gonna be the dirty area, like it, because it's always dirty. I can't keep it clean. I'm always working in there. I'm always doing stuff. So that's going to be our uh, fab shop type deal. Like when we're working on the uh, dirty stuff. I got dirt on my lip, my beard.
but anyways that's what we're going to do we're going to use that one for more of a tear down clean you know tear down fab up bring it over here do our clean final assembly stuff over here um, maybe our more of our little will it run little videos we'll do over here too uh, I'm gonna do this weed eater there probably ain't nothing probably just need some fuel lines and uh, that's the head so then I'll be able to weed eat but I don't weed eat I got I got that I got that sprayer and then I got used motor oil that I mix with you know like old stale gas out of stuff and uh, yeah I'm uh, I spray so on that note we, I appreciate y'all sticking around watching um, got any questions or anything leave it down in the comments and I'll be sure to try to answer the best I can if it's something I don't know I'll, I'll straight up honest won't tell you I won't I don't know and uh, yeah we'll see you guys on the next one I'm rambling on I know it uh, there's a lot of stuff that racket through my brain you know I'm wanting to get on this golf cart and I can't do it because I ain't got the money it's it's all crazy so on that note I'm out of here I appreciate you guys watching if you can hit that subscribe button go ahead and hit it I think it's like over there it might be over there I don't know and what it does it, it you hit that and it'll bring up like my little profile thing and then it'll, you click it go to my page and then hit the subscribe button it don't ask you no information no nothing it just have you push that little button it's like hitting the little like button, follow button. So if you guys do that for me, I greatly appreciate it. I'm at a hundred, a hundred, like 139 or 140 something. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm 142, I think 148. I'm under 150 of them that I need. So if you guys can help me, man, I appreciate it. We're out of here.